to the first Friday comedy open mic. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here. Thank you. I'm fighting with this. Screw it. I don't care. All right. I want to thank Lydia, who produces this every month. I want to thank uh, Alaska. I want to thank Patina Arts for letting us come down and be funky in their basement. I hope you guys went upstairs, saw the art. It's highbrow. You can come down here. It's lowbrow. I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be a good night. We've got um, 18 comics. That is a lot of love and a lot of laughter. So you guys do, please turn off the ringer on your phones. Um, everything is being recorded. So try to stay out of the middle aisle. So he's gonna record the sets for the comics. So we can be famous <laughs> down here, starting in the basement. Um, okay, I'm so excited to be here. I'm just gonna go into it. It's tax season. I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna go see my accountant on Tuesday morning. Um, now, fun fact, my accountant died during last tax season. At his, it's not funny, but he, he died doing what he loved, which was taxes. <laughs> at his desk, in his golf cap, you know, seriously. And I'm like, why isn't he calling me back? Because he died. So, God bless George, um, up there in heaven, killing it. Um, so I get, I, it's, his girlfriend's like, okay, I got a tax guy for you. I'm like, so I call him up, and he's like, okay, just I want you to go to this address, I want you to go to the second floor, and uh, go down the back hallway, and go to the third door on the left. He's like, uh, there's not a lot of people here. And I'm like, okay. So I go there, and it's like freaking, you know, you better call Sal, right? You got this fan with like the papers rolling on the fan, and he has like <laughs> old food and paper plates and coffee cups. I think I saw a rat, maybe it was a very large mouse, and he paid no attention. So as he's going through my taxes, I get his trash can that he keeps by his desk, and I start bussing that room. <laughs> it was so bad. And I ended up getting a discount. I did, I sincerely did, and I'm on his favorites list. Um, and this year I have a, this, well, you know, it's, it's Easter time, you know, and uh, instead of Christ is risen, I'm pretty sure my taxes is risen. Aw, that's so sad. <laughs> we'll find out. I'll write that check. Um, all right, everybody, thank you for being here. I'm sincerely gonna get this show going because we have a lot of comics. Um, make sure, please, turn off your ringers, tip your bartenders and waitresses, which would be yourselves since you brought your own stuff. Thank you very much. All right, I am so excited to bring to the stage this beautiful lady, Skylark Bruce from Canton, Ohio. Skylark Bruce. Hey, I am Skylark. I have performed on this stage area lots of times before, but always as a poet. So I know what you're thinking. I totally shouldn't tease you with poetry, but only give you comedy. But there is one poem in my set. <laughs> so back when I did help run poetry shows, the new people were always afraid of the mic. They would start like way back here, and they would talk really low. And so then, of course, somebody would yell out, closer to the mic, please. And so they would come like a millimeter closer. And then another helpful person who was not satisfied with that would yell out, like a penis! <laughs> Which never actually helps the new people. <laughs> and when an, an experienced poet would come up with new material, everybody would yell out, new shit! <laughs> so how many of you were raised to think that your only option was to be heterosexual? And that you had to wait till marriage? I have a sister who actually did that with my first boyfriend. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think. I dated this guy for five months in college. He did meet my family because my parents have to be involved in everything. I dumped him and eight years later he looked up my sister. They dated for a year or two and then at their engagement party everyone is going around telling cute stories about them. 
I stayed quiet with this grin on my face. And my mom finally says at the end, okay, out with it. I looked my sister in the eye and just said, you're welcome. (laughs) My sister and my ex-boyfriend turned brother-in-law absolutely hate it when I tell people how they met. Which is exactly why I do tell people how they met. (laughs) Really, they knew who they were getting involved with and now they're embarrassed? The straights are not okay. Speaking of compulsory heterosexuality, I'm old enough, almost 40, to have done online dating with men back when it was dating sites, not dating apps. And then, okay, now it's all these apps, and I have to change all the questions I answered way back when, because I'm no longer straight, or monogamous, or allosexual, or strictly vanilla. (laughs) The only thing that didn't change is I still don't want kids, and I don't smoke tobacco. The, the best part is I get a lot fewer unsolicited dick pics. <laughs> best thing ever. I did once get dumped from a relationship I didn't know I was in. We met on Tinder. She was very clear she wanted a fuck buddy for the self-discovery journey she was on. She seemed like somebody that I would actually be friends with. So I said, sure, let's hang out. We hung out as friends, did some of the fuck buddy stuff too. Then she's like... So, I enjoy dating you, but I'm not really feeling the sparks. So I'm going to have to cut you loose. And I said, wait, we were dating? <laughs> if I was trying to date you, it would have been obvious. <laughs> Apparently, even when you're not dating, dating is hard. But sometimes it is wholesome. On a date with a different person who's also polyamorous, I got a text message from another person asking me out on a date. I asked the date that I'm on if she minds if I take a moment to reply to this date request. She says, sure. And then she added, tell her I highly recommend you. 10 out of 10, would date again. So enough dating, let's talk about dead people. A while back, I was a newspaper reporter in these small towns, you know, all the drama. The wackiest stuff comes up at these town council meetings. One town has this big cemetery for veterans and a developer wanted to put houses in across the street. Among the residents' objections to this developer's plan was the veterans need peace and quiet. The veterans buried in the cemetery need peace and quiet. (laughs) Honey, the corpse bride is fiction. (laughs) To close out, this is a very short poem. I found your underwear underneath the couch three months after I kicked you out. Fuck you in a different way than when it came off. (laughs) All right, give it up everybody for Skylock Bruce. That was hilarious.